Praise the Lord. We'll stand up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Bible study tonight. Thank you for this first Bible study of the year. And thank you, Lord, because you are leading us to developing our faith and growing in praying so that, Lord, this year will be a wonderful year. It will be a great year. And as your people pray, you give us irresistible power in Jesus' name. Open the pages of the scriptures to us. Feed us, Lord, with this bread of life that we will see and know and understand the things that will make us strong in the Lord and answer the prayers of your people. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down. Matthew chapter 7. We're looking at verse 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you? Whom if a son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then been evil, not to give good things, give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Those are the words we're looking at today. Asking in prayer with great assurance. As you look at the whole sermon on the mount, it's the unparalleled teaching of Jesus Christ that you have in that sermon on the mount. And yet our Lord now reveals the great privilege of praying for every child of God. For many believers, this is a much neglected privilege. If Abraham, Moses, Elijah, or Daniel were here today, if they were to have the great and precious promises which we have, their power, their impact on their world will have no equal. Their power will literally be indescribable. We have great victories and great possibilities before us. And they are ours just for the asking. That's why you see Jesus said, ask and it shall be given unto you. Every area of our lives can have a divine impartation. And your life will have that divine impartation this month in Jesus' name. Our spiritual lives, our moral lives can be transformed and renewed. All our needs can be supernaturally supplied. All our situations and circumstances can be changed for the better. We can be holier, we can be healthier, and we can be happier. We can be free from oppression, and we can be victorious over all temptations and trials and troubles. In fact, we can receive and experience abundant grace and abundant strength great strength to be all that the lord has purpose that we will be in this new year all we need to do is come to these bible studies and learn what it means to ask and to seek and then to knock and have the door opened unto you the lord has already assured us that our father who is in heaven knows everything we need even before we ask him let us come therefore and ask let us reverse the decree of the Persians that says we shouldn't ask God anything. We should only ask the king of Persia. We reverse that. We will not ask any Persian king this month about anything. We're going to center our request unto the Lord. And the Lord will answer us in Jesus' name. In fact, it tells us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. What a great privilege you have. What a great privilege I have. It says, be careful for nothing. That means be worried about nothing. Why worry when you can pray? Be careful for nothing. 
but in every sin by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God practice asking God for your needs and expecting an answer until praying in faith becomes a habit we're looking at the study tonight under three subtitles. Number one, unlimited promises for all believers. You are a believer. I want to tell you, you have unlimited promises. And you're going to claim them this month in Jesus' name. Number two, unanswered prayers and the barriers. We need to expose all that the devil has been doing to try to create barriers and hurdles before us and why some prayers are not answered unanswered prayers and barriers for those who have been having hindrances number three unclaimed provision of blessing and benefits unclaimed provision of benefits and blessings blessings and benefits now we come to matthew chapter 7 Unlimited promises for all believers. It says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Let's stop there for a moment. Maybe you have prayed before, and then there was no answer given. And you said, But Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find Knock and it shall be opened unto you The very first thing when you get a letter The postman brings a letter to your door You know many people are living in that house And he hands it over to you I hope you are not just going to tear the letter open And begin to read You look at the address at the back Although we are living in this house And this letter is sent to this house Am I the one, the recipient? Am I the one to receive and to open it and to read? Find out. When Jesus said, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock it shall be opened unto you. Who are the people Jesus addressed and said you are to ask? Let me tell you number one, the children of the heavenly father. Look at verse 11. If ye then being evil not to give good gifts your children 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 how much more shall your father which is in heaven your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him number one they will be children of god who are those people they're the people who have turned away from their from their sins and they have turned away from satan they do not allow satan to control their lives anymore and then they belong to the family of God They are children of God Those are the people that Jesus said Ask It shall be given you Number two They are what we call the beatitude believers Not just believers Not just ordinary, shallow, superficial believers We call them beatitude believers What does that mean? Look at Matthew chapter 5 Reading from verse 3 Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. That does, those are the beatitudes. Those verse after verse. And the people who have entered into the experience of these verses. Those are the people we call beatitude believers. They are the believers in the Lord. And then these blessings of the beatitudes have occurred in their lives. And it says in that verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that which do hunger after and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. The thirsty. The hungry. And they are thirsty and hungry after righteousness. These are the people that Jesus had been addressing. And now as it comes to the last chapter. He said if you have entered into that experience. Poor in spirit. You have entered into that experience. And you mourn for the sins of the past. And now you have been comforted because you are forgiven. And you are meek. And then you, you do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Verse 7. Blessed are the merciful. 
for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. God. Those are the people. Those are the people that Jesus said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock it shall be opened unto you. Number three, who are these people that Jesus said, ask? They are the people who are the salt of the earth. They are not the people carrying hatred and bitterness all about. They are not people that are spreading hatred and bitterness in society. You know, there are people, they just receive the letter and they say, wonderful, look at this letter. Letter, all the promises inside there might wait before you open the letter to know whether your name is there or not. All these promises that we see, they belong to the people that are the salt of the earth. Look at verse 13 of chapter 5. Ye are the salt of the earth. You're switching your community, your words seasoned with salt. Your attitude spreading salt and sweetness all around. Your interaction with people spreading salt and sweetness all around. Number four, they are the light of the world. Look at it in verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. And you see, when you get any promise in the Bible, you open the Bible like this. Say, this is a great promise. That's like a letter. That is written. You want to find out who are the people that are to receive that letter, that are to open that letter, that are to read that letter, and then they are to benefit from all the things that are said therein. Number four, they are the light of the world. These are the people that fellowship with the light, that is capital L, and they are not walking in darkness. I want you to look at John, first John chapter one. First John chapter 1, I'm reading there from verse 7, verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then it says we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Those are the people Jesus said, ask. And it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. These are the servants of the master. Number five. They are the people that they have given their hearts to the Lord. He is Savior to them. He is also Lord. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. The people that Jesus told ask and it shall be given you. They are not the people that are having one leg on land and one leg in the sea. One leg in the light, another leg in darkness. They are not the people that are trying to obey God and obey Satan at the same time. They are the people that have God as their king, as their Lord, as the only master they will submit themselves to. Because Jesus said, it's impossible for you to serve God and mammon. And these people that Jesus said, Ask that the people that have gone through all this and have experienced that submission unto the Lord and is their only Lord, those are the people Jesus said, Ask, it shall be given unto you. Number six, they are the citizens of the kingdom. The people Jesus said, Ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. They are citizens of the kingdom. Look at Matthew chapter 6. I'm reading verses 32 and 33. Therefore, take no thought, and for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he says, and all these things shall be added unto you. That the people that make the kingdom a priority 
and he put the kingdom as number one and Jesus said seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness if you do that all these things shall be added unto you then you can ask it shall be given unto you seek and you shall find and knock it shall be opened unto you citizens of the kingdom and number seven these are sheep in the fold these are sheep in the fold they are not serpents in the secret they are not goats that are roaming about without any control without any check but the sheep in the fold in Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. These are the people Jesus said, Now ask, it shall be given unto you, and seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Then let's come back to Matthew chapter 7. You see, this word ask makes prayer very simple for a child of God. You are a child of God. The word ask makes prayer very simple because praying is simply coming to your father and asking in fact the word ask appears in every verse from verse 7 all through to verse 11 look at it verse 7 ask it shall be given unto you that's the word ask in verse 8 for everyone that asks receive it that's the word again in verse 9 or what man is there of you whom if his son shall ask bread that's the word again the next verse is in verse 10 or if ye ask a fish and then in verse 11 if ye then been able not to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him so then you understand that praying is simply asking that's why you find each in every verse not only that if you look at those three words the first word ask the second word seek or the third word knock if you pick the first letter of the word ask that's a and then you pick the first letter of the word seek that's s if you pick the first letter of the word knock what's that k that's ask again so then it means that when you're thinking about prayer prayer is not prayer is not jumping it's not rolling it's not weeping it's not rolling on the ground prayer is simply asking and that's what jesus said he's teaching us about prayer and he's telling us this is the implication this is the meaning of praying simply ask when you ask the lord will give unto us he'll give us in jesus name and see here the lord teaches on prayer as a privilege as well as a precept it's a command and then it's also a privilege it will be strange for his son to always be asking strangers. I think about a child in the family. And then his, whatever he needs, the father is there. And the father is rich enough to supply all his needs. He never asks the father. And he goes to strangers in the community asking. The Lord doesn't want that. You are a child of God. Whatever your needs are, you go to the Lord and you say, Father, here is my need. Will he answer your prayer? He will answer. And what do you do to your child? If you find that your child, with all that you have at home, and he could easily ask you, and you have called this child, you have said, my boy, my daughter, anything you need, every time approach me, tell me, and I'll give you. But this child has the habit of going to beg outside, going to other people who are not even related to you at all. And then they, maybe they give him something, and then they'll say, your father is there, he's rich, he cannot do anything, cannot give you anything. And the father overhears that. How would you feel? And that's exactly what happened to one man. They call him Saul. He had, a, he had a problem. Instead of asking God, then he asked from enemies of God. Let's look at First Chronicles chapter 10. First Chronicles chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 13 and verse 14. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. 
and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. It's a great insult on our Heavenly Father when any of his children, any of his people, when they have a need, and instead of asking God, they go to ask agents of Satan. They go to ask the herbalist and they go to seek help from the people who are enemies of Christ and enemies of righteousness. And you think about Saul, number one citizen in Israel, their king. And instead of going to God, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, and the God of Israel, the God of the nation, God Almighty, instead of asking him, he went to a person having familiar spirit asking for help. The Lord wasn't happy with that. And the Lord is still not happy with that. So don't go and be asking which doctors and all those herbalists and all the familiar spirit for anything you need. Ask God and God will answer your prayer. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5. Thus says the Lord. Because such be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departeth from the Lord. Actually, there's a curse on those who will not depend upon the Lord, rely on the Lord, ask the Lord with all the wonderful promises the Lord has given us. And what they do is to go and ask familiar spirit or witch doctor or sorceress or whatever. There's a cause and such an action. That's why you shouldn't do that as a child of God. If you ask, we have unlimited promises. And the Lord will fulfill those promises for us in Jesus' name. We're looking at Matthew chapter 21. See the great, great, great promises the Lord has given us. Matthew chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 21. Jesus answered and said unto them Verily I say unto you Anytime you see Jesus saying that Verily, certainly, assuredly Without any shadow of doubt That's what it means Verily I say unto you Once again he's talking to believers He's talking to children of God He's talking to his own disciples He says verily I say unto you If ye have faith and doubt not Ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree But also if ye shall say to this mountain Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea It shall be done Your mountain will move away and all things whatsoever ye shall ask that's the word again that's the word again i love that word everything ye shall ask in prayer believing ye shall receive john chapter 14 in john chapter 14 you're looking at verses 12 to 14 john chapter 14 reading from verse 12 verily verily i say unto you again that you there means the disciples the children of god those who own christ as their lord and master these are not pharisees or sadducees these are not people that do not know the lord these are people that know the lord verily very nice unto you you who know the lord you who believe in the lord you whose sins have been forgiven you are living to glorify the your light of the world and salt of the earth ye who are living such a, in such a way that you bring honor and glory unto god i say unto you he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever, whatsoever ye shall ask, that's the word again, is asking. That's all you need to do. If you're a child of God, if you're walking in the light, if you're spreading the salt and the sweetness in your community, by your language, by your action, if you're showing that you're beatitude believer it says whatsoever ye shall ask believing uh, that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son verse 14 if he shall ask that's your word if he shall ask anything in my name i will do it he will do it 
John chapter 15 verse 7 If ye abide in me and my words abide in you You know now these are believers Not just, not just every dick and hurry Not just somebody carrying the Bible He has a Bible in the hand He doesn't have the Bible in the heart not just people that memorize some verses of the Bible The Bible is in the head, it's not in the heart It's in the mouth, but it's not in the mind The Bible is, you know, it's all over You know, he even maybe wear something they call it It's a cross, he puts the cross in the ear For fashion, but he's not bearing the cross Like a real disciple We're not talking about those people Those are fake people We're talking about genuine people Real people They have the word of God in their hearts If you believe in me and you abide in me And my words abide in you Look at what follows in verse 7 Ye shall ask You see that beautiful word If the word of God is abiding in you And you are living the life That shows you demonstrate The presence and the power Of the word in your heart Ye shall ask what she will and it shall be done unto you look at verse 16 it says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit these people are bringing forth the fruit of the spirit the love and the joy and the peace their lives are different and then it says as a result of that that whatsoever you shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you he'll give you in jesus name in john chapter 16 verse 23 and in that day ye shall ask me nothing Verily, verily I say unto you Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father You are a child of God He is your Father You have given your heart to Him He is your Father My Son Give me your heart And if you have given your heart to Him Like a son does to the Father You are faithful to Him You are loyal to Him You accept Him as just your only Father you don't have two fathers biologically just one and if you have given jesus christ the priority of saving your soul and you have given him the solitary privilege of being your lord and not god in heaven is your father then it says in the verse 23 that the father will give you what you're asking he will give it to you he the two of he has nothing in my name ask that's the word ask and it says and ye shall receive that your joy may be full your joys are full already in james chapter one james chapter one i'm reading from verse five james chapter one verse five if any of you lack wisdom if any of you lack wisdom, again, you need to understand. Every time you read something like that, you must find out any of you. Does that mean anybody at the, you know, under the bridge? Anybody on the street? Anybody that has never stepped inside a church building? Anybody that doesn't know the name of Jesus? No. Look at verse 2. My brethren, that's it to sage, brothers and sisters my brethren what i'm telling you is whenever you read any promise of the bible and it says ask you must find out who are those people that those promises are addressed to here it says in verse 2 my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith Walk at patience. These are people that already believe in the Lord. Your faith, the trying of your faith, the persecution you receive as a result of your faith that walk at patience. But let patience have a perfect walk that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting, lacking nothing. Now it says in verse 5 if any of you, brethren, lack wisdom, let him ask that's the word let him ask of god and then it says that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him if any of you lack wisdom what do i need wisdom for the wisdom to choose and the wisdom to make decisions 
you know, sometimes you want to make a choice. Do I go this way? Do I go that way? You want to take a decision. Do I decide for A or decide for B? And you don't know. You lack wisdom. If any of you lack the wisdom to choose and the wisdom to decide, let him ask of God, what do I need wisdom for? The wisdom to live in fellowship with the other brethren. You know, sometimes it takes wisdom to live with, you know, this person because his life is it's a Christian, it's a child of God, but you don't think the same way. You don't feel the same way. And you are not excited about the same thing. You are interested in this. They are interested in that. Your hobbies are different. And your lifestyles, you're born again, both of you. But you don't, you don't go the same direction. And you happen to be living together. And you say, it's going to take some wisdom to live with this man. It's going to take some wisdom to live with this sister. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. What do I need wisdom for? You know, as we're winning souls, he that winneth soul is wise. We need wisdom to talk to these sinners. And then you see that you want to preach, you love to preach, you want to talk to people about Christ. The only problem is you don't have the wisdom to approach them. And so they are slipping away from you. You're never able to catch any fish. And then it says, if anybody lacks wisdom for soul winning, let him ask of God and then it says God will give him and you know sometimes some temptations come and those temptations are tricky and before you know what if you are not careful your back is on the ground already and then you begin to cry I don't want to sin I don't want to do evil I want to live like a real child of God but when this temptation comes I don't know what to say I don't know what to do and it's after the whole sin is gone and I'm defeated then I then remember this is what I should have said if any of you lack wisdom to resist temptation and the wisdom to conquer the tempter if you lack wisdom ask of God he give it to all men liberally and of greatest not and you know sometimes we have some resources spiritual resources material resources we have some things that the Lord has put within us but the problem is we don't have the wisdom to keep them sometimes you know we read in our Bible reading tonight about something he didn't he had power he didn't have the wisdom to keep that power he had energy, physical energy. He didn't have the wisdom to keep that ability and energy. And then as Delilah was asking all those questions, you know, she, he dribbled Delilah this way and this way. And uh, Delilah said, but you are not telling me the truth. And he didn't have the wisdom to quit. You see, there are people like that. They are just paralyzed. The wisdom to stand up and take your feet and run away, they don't have. They are not like Joseph. Joseph of the wisdom. And if you are captured like that, and you know you shouldn't be here in that place, you shouldn't be talking to this woman, and the wisdom to stop the conversation, you don't have. That's why it says, if any of you lack wisdom, the wisdom to put Delilah at arm's length, let her stay in her place and you stay in your place. If you lack, lack that kind of wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. You know, sometimes those of us who are leaders, any of, uh, you know, my colleagues uh, will tell you, that is our ministers and overseers that are worshipping with us tonight, any of them will tell you, to lead takes wisdom. To guide other people takes wisdom. And to be able to say, go this way and go that way, and for the people to accept that, it takes wisdom. And if there's anything I'm crying for and there, and we are all crying for and asking the Lord for, is the wisdom to lead and to guide others. And the Lord is telling us, don't give up. If any of you lack the wisdom to lead and to guide, let him ask of God. And it says, he will give him because he's going to give liberally. You know, sometimes our mothers and fathers, your child is turning into teenage years. And your child is now knowing more grammar than you know. It's not knows about life more than you know. And this information age, the child is able to push this button, push that button, and get some information out from the computer, from the internet. 
And before you say what, the child, you know, at 16, 17, say, Mommy, they don't say it like that anymore. And then, you, Daddy, they don't talk like that anymore. Shut up. I'm your father. Yes, Daddy, you are my father. But if, if Daddy's make mistake, must we not talk? Then you say, how do, I, how do I lead this child? The child is growing taller than I am. Also, he's having something upstairs in the head more than I have. If any of you fathers, mothers, lack wisdom in guiding your teenage daughters and teenage boys, sons, let him ask of God that giveth unto all men. And then it says, breatheth not. You know, the wisdom to raise your children. The wisdom to train your children. No, that's what we're learning here. That's why we're coming this month. And whatever it is we lack, whatever it is we need, the Lord says, come for the wisdom. Before you come next Monday, you are wiser already. Because you go back to God and say, Lord, I cannot solve this. I need wisdom. I cannot approach this. I need wisdom. And this child is getting tough for me. I need wisdom to keep this child in the home. And to keep this child in the paths of righteousness and rectitude. And the Lord is saying, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. You will have it in Jesus name. We come to point number two on answered prayers and the barriers. The reason we are looking at this is so that by the grace of God we are going to expose the devil. Once your enemy is exposed, there's no danger anymore. And once you know the barrier is there, the stumbling block is there, there's no danger anymore. The barrier, the stumbling block will not keep you down. No believer should have any of his prayers unanswered. You're a believer, a child of God. Because you have redemptive right. Number two, you have family right. Number three, you have kingdom right. What that means is redemptive right. There are some rights you have, privileges you have as a result of your redemption. Then the family right. As a result of you belonging to the family of God, there are some rights you have, some privileges you have. And because you are a child of God, having that family right, you shouldn't ever have any failure in receiving answers to your prayer. And then the kingdom right. Just because you are a citizen in the kingdom of God that you are a subject of the king and you are a citizen of the kingdom as a result of that there are some rights some privileges and promises that you have and you need to know that therefore if you were to stay by that you will not allow any hindrance at all all this should guarantee answers to prayer as we walk with God as we seek only his will and let the mind in us be the mind of Christ and then we're asking according to his will every time held by the Holy Spirit who knows the mind of God and then we desire only what God desires and we can always expect answers to our prayers and we shall not be disappointed in Jesus name but are there hindrances? yes are there barriers? yes why do we sometimes experience failure in answer to our prayers and the prayers are not answered look at Deuteronomy chapter 1 Deuteronomy chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 42. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 42. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up. You see, the Lord wanted them to go earlier. And Caleb said, Yes, we're well able. Let us go. But the ten spies said, No, but we're not able. And they made the people afraid. And then they said, all right, we're not going to the land of Canaan. That land of promise flowing with milk and honey. We don't want you to go. And Moses said, why? But why? And then Caleb said, but we can go there. No, they said, we're like grasshoppers. And those people are giants. And God was looking at them. It came to a point, their resistance to move forward came to a point that God said, Moses, tell them, all right, you want to go. Then it was at that time they woke up and they said, All right, now we're going to go. And God said, Moses, tell them, Go not up. 
And then you find in that verse 42, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest she be smitten before your enemies. You know, the Lord was taking care of them. He said, at this time, I'm not happy with you. Put the things right that I'm trying to correct. If you go at this time, I will not go with you. He told them, he didn't want them to go without him so that their enemies will not conquer them. And when they were told that, in verse 43, so I spake unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites which dwelt in that mountain came out against you, and chased you as bees do, and destroyed you in Seir, even unto Homer. And ye returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice nor give ear unto you. What caused the barrier here? It was just their disobedience and, and rebellion. The Lord said, go. They said, no, we can't go. I said, okay, don't go now. Then they said, okay, we're going to go now. When God said, go, they said, no. When God said, don't go, they said, now we're going to go. Always standing at the opposite extreme to the Lord. You will not like that for your own children. Every time you tell your child, go this way, say, no, I'm going the other way. Okay, don't go to that place. No, that's exactly the place I'm going. You are fathers and mothers. Many of us say, you will not like that. And when we do that to God, and God says, this is what you do. And we say, no. I want to prove that you are higher than God, wiser than God, greater than God, stronger than God. And God will not appreciate that. That will stand as a barrier against the prayers we pray. And now we're looking at Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7. I read from verse 11 and verse 12. Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of their cursed sin, and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. They were dealing with God as if God was blind. They didn't know that God is the all seen one, He sees in the dark. He sees in the light. He sees the private things. He sees the public things. He sees what men do not see. He knows what women do not know. He knows what the people who are closest to us, what those people don't know about us. And because he knows all things, the action, the thought, the movement, the things we're trying to hide from men. He knows everything. He knows it all. And because we're playing this hide and seek with God, Achan had taken something. And Achan still was part of the army, part of the people of God. And still saying, yes sir, yes sir, to Joshua. Will you go this way? Go with the army to that place? Yes, sir. I'm going. And yet there was something buried in the ground of his own house. You see that kind of attitude or hinder prayer? And God will not, God does not want to walk with hypocrisy. God wants honesty, humility, and holiness. If you've done something wrong, instead of burying it up and hiding it, you come to God. It's such a compassionate, loving God. He forgives. What a pardoning God we have. And whatever it is you have done, don't you see? See what Jonah did. And then even though it was in the whale's belly, said, now I hurt myself. I've gone this way. I've forsaken my own mercy. Oh Lord, I will pay my vow. Immediately, it didn't take a long time. God said, whale, vomit that Jonah on the shore. He didn't have to even pay for that transportation. To, and he was there right by the side of Nineveh. And then, uh, Jonah, you promised me in the whale's belly that you will go if I said, yes, I did. Now go there. And he went, there. that's all. That's how to settle with God. Not that we cover it up and wrap it up as if God will not know. And once we settle it and say, God, we're sorry. That's all he wants. And then we'll begin victory again. I said, we'll begin victory again. But you know, these people, they have not learned that lesson we are learning now. Verse 12, therefore, 
the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies. And because they were a cause, because they were a cause, neither will I be with you anymore, except there was still the open door, except ye destroy their cursed from among you. And thank God for people like Joshua. He rose up immediately and searched out that sin and removed that sin, and God started answering their prayers again. Again. Whatever it is that has been hindering our prayers, we'll remove it immediately. And then our prayers will be answered. In, in Psalm 66, verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, I want you to read that verse very well. And you know, there are some people, uh, sometimes when they are talking, you will see their ignorance you will see how they don't understand uh, they say well look at my hand my hand is clean who can accuse me that I touched his money my hands are clean it is not if I regard iniquity in my hands the Lord will not hear me you know there are some people that say no what I said, are you saying I told a lie? This is my mouth. I never give it to lying. And I don't know why I will ask God for this and God will not answer. Because as for my mouth, not me. No lie. Read your Bible. It doesn't say if I regard iniquity in my mouth, the Lord will not hear me. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The actions of our hand, they originate from the heart. The speech of our mouth, they originate from the heart. And the things, the place we walk to, where our legs take us to, is not just the leg walking, they originate from the heart. And if you have iniquity in the heart, if you have sin in the heart, you hide it in the heart but you're able to control yourself you don't voice anything out the other person said keep the secret whatever question they ask you no matter how they dribble you and no matter how they try to get the word out of you your mouth must never make the mistake of saying nothing keep it in your heart and as you are keeping that evil sin, that iniquity, that sin in your heart, it says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, and you know, sometimes, husband and wife, they are living together, but there is a mage in the house that is helping, and then you go to do something that is bad, and then after that, the maid begins to weep and to cry. Daddy, daddy, see what you have done. You messed me up. All right, I'm sorry. But keep this one in your heart. Your mouth must never open to tell my wife. You know that my wife has hypertension. If you tell her what happened, she may die. So if she dies, her blood is on you. Ah, daddy, I will not, I will not tell her. I keep it in my heart. Although your mouth doesn't say it. Although you don't discuss it to anybody. God will not answer your prayer. If I regard iniquity where? In my heart. And that's the reason why. Those who are real believers. We check up on this heart. The hands are clean. The heart is pure. In the public and in the private. We make sure there's no barrier. It's only then you can come and say God. You know your promise. The promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask. It shall be given thee. Seek and ye shall find. Knock. It shall be opened unto you. That thing you've been keeping in your heart. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse it and wash it and then you are whiter than snow your heart is clear your hands are clean your mouth is pure and your life within and without totally pure I'm telling you when you pray answers will be coming down like the rain upon you and then look at this now in Isaiah chapter 59 Isaiah chapter 59 
I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 59, verses 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have he this face from you that he will not hear you see the problem of sin that's why many people's prayers are not answered now that you know the secret the lord will help you you cleanse everything up he will answer your prayers and then we're looking at proverbs chapter one proverbs chapter one and let's look at these people who hinder themselves, who hurt themselves, who harm themselves, and who do not allow their own prayers to be answered. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24, because I have called and ye refused. Because I have called and ye refused. Look up here, uh, you know, as they say it in normal English language, uh, the people say, it beats my imagination. And that's, that's how I'm using that language now. If the president of our country will send somebody and say, go and call so and so, whatever the president is calling you for, for you to have the authority, the audacity to say, you policeman, go and tell the president that he's sending for me, I am not coming. That beats my imagination. It beats your imagination chief, the almighty God, the king of the whole universe will send the Holy Ghost and send from the scripture and say, call so and so. I came to call you to repentance and to righteousness. And he calls you and you say, tell God almighty, I am not coming. I'm not going to respond. I will not do what he says. Can you blame God then if God leaves you to yourself? When Satan comes on you, when the enemies come to bombard you, and when the pressure of the world comes to crush you, and when the evil things and the curse of the world, when it comes to destroy you, can you blame God when God said, come, I want to help you, and you tell the Holy Ghost, like this other man I was talking about, tells that policeman, go and tell the president, I'm not coming. And when you have that kind of strong will and mind to tell the Holy Ghost to go and tell the Almighty God, me, so and so, I'm not coming. Can you blame him if when the enemies come upon you like a flood and then you call upon God, he doesn't answer? You see, we hurt ourselves when we set those barriers. I pray that tonight all those barriers are broken down. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24, because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but she have said at not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Don't blame God what you sow, you reap. Don't blame God. The way you acted to him, he reacts back to you. To every action, there is an equal reaction. That's what you learn, children. That's what you learn to your physics. And so, when you act this way and God calls you, you say, no, I'm not coming. God say, all right, go your way. And then when it comes to your turn, you get into trouble, you are calling on God and says, well, I cannot answer you. This is what you sow. This is what you are reaping. And it says over there, then shall they call upon me and I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way 
and be filled with their own devices for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them but in verse 33 whoso hackness unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil we will listen to God I said we're going to listen to God. Before I pass on from that point, Zechariah, this is something you must, you must know. I mark it in your Bible. Zechariah chapter 7 from verse 12. Yea, they have made their hearts as an adamant stone. You know, God was surprised. Even God was surprised. I made their heart flesh soft but they now have made their hearts as an adamant stone they hardened their hearts lest they should hear the law the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts therefore it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord is saying, we should turn around, we should repent. We shouldn't uh, kind of sear our consciences. We shouldn't harden our hearts. We should respond to the Lord as the Lord is calling us. As we respond, the Lord will answer our prayers. I come to point number three now. Unclaimed provision of blessings and benefits. Unclaimed provisions of blessings and benefits. Matthew chapter 7. We're looking at verse 11. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto, unto your children, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to them that ask him we as children of God should understand that as long as we remain children obedient children loving children submissive children loyal children, faithful children unto the heavenly father if we ask then he will give us what we are asking, Second Peter chapter 1 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness according as his divine power unlimited power great inexhaustible power power that never gets tired or weary according to that unlimited power he has given unto us all things all things that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue whereby are given unto unto who I said unto who? Are you part of them? He has given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws. Again, he is giving this promise to those who have escaped from the corruption that is in the world. We're looking at Matthew chapter 18 Matthew chapter 18 and I'm reading from verse 18 and verse 19 Matthew chapter 18 verses 18 and 19 verily I say unto you whatsoever when God says whatsoever that means whatever it is this is unlimited and when God begins to answer your prayer this month is you are going to be surprised because it's whatsoever spiritual things physical things natural things supernatural things in the area of your character in the area of your job in the area of marriage every area in your life something great is waiting for you 
Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Is that right? Do you believe that? Look at verse 19. Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching any sin that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. You know, I've heard many people quoting this verse of scripture, verse 19. And even myself, before, I mean, some time ago, the way I've quoted it, and the way you have quoted it, and the way many people quote it is this. Verse 19. Again, I say unto you, that if any two of you, have you heard that before? Any two, any, they put that any, is, there, is the word any, is it there? You know, sometimes when you read the Bible, a little word you insert, a little word you put in, may change everything. A little word you remove may change everything. Now, when he said, again, I say unto you, that if two of you, again, we need to find out when he says two of you, A and B. I'm asking myself now, here is, look at Matthew, we're coming back to that Matthew chapter 18, because you see, it's when you understand it, you'll be able to actually stand on it and claim it, then you will know this is yours. Let's look at Mark chapter 10, verse Mark chapter 10 verse 35 And James and John These are two people In fact they are even two Of his disciples Again I say unto you If two of you Shall agree It says and James and John The sons of Zebedee Come unto him Saying master we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. They had listened to that promise of Jesus in Matthew chapter 18. And then the two of them came together. You see, it's not just any two. You must check up your motive. You must check up your desire, your ambition. Why? Are you asking what you're asking? And you see, for James and John, they were disappointed. The sin, the sin they were asking for was not given to them. That's why you read your Bible very well. Do you remember Balak and Balaam? Two of them. They had one purpose and one goal. And the purpose was that they will curse the children of Israel. Two of you agreeing together as touching anything. That anything must agree with the plan of God. Must agree with the desire of God. Look at Numbers chapter 22 And I'm reading from verse 36 Numbers chapter 22 Verse 36 Two of you, two of you But you have to understand those two The kind of mind they have And what promise they're trying to claim Numbers chapter 22 verse 36 And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of uh, to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Anon, which is in the uttermost coast. And they came together, and now they agreed together that the children of Israel were to be caused. That uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty three verse five. Deuteronomy 23 verse 5 Nevertheless the Lord thy God Would not hearken unto Balaam Whatever agreement Balaam Had with Balak Nevertheless the Lord Your God will not Hearken The condition of the heart is still important Therefore James and John Those two It didn't work Balak and Balaam Those two didn't work Now Absalom and Ahithophel Absalom and Ahithophel They agreed together 
They wanted to take the kingdom away from David. That wasn't the will of God. You cannot agree together on something that is not the will of God. Again, if two of you shall agree as touching any sin that they shall ask, you cannot coach that and then come together, Absalom and Ahithophel, and then we're told that God it just upturned or overturned the counsel of Ahithophel because that wasn't the will of God. And so, when you read the promises of God, any two of you, the two of you coming together, agree together. Ah, it has to be something inside in the will of God. Look at Second Samuel. I'm reading from chapter 15, verse 2. Second Samuel, chapter 15. And we're looking at verse 12. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite. David's counselor from his city, even from Gilo or Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. He offered sacrifices and then he called Ahithophel. Look at chapter 16, verse 15. Chapter 16, verse 15, it says in verse 15 there, and Absalom and all the people, and all the people, the men of Israel came to Jerusalem. And Ahithophel with him. Verse 23. Chapter 16, verse 23. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of, of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Chapter 17, verse 14. And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai, the Archite, is better than the counsel of Ahithophel, for the Lord had appointed to defeat the good counsel of Ahithophel to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. You see that kind of thing? Although there was agreement between Absalom and Ahithophel, that agreement will not work. You cannot just call the scriptures. If two of you shall agree together as touching anything, that anything must be in the perfect will of God. Now, Nadab and Abihu those two people, they agreed together and they came before the Lord to offer strange fire. And although they agreed together, the agreement did not go well with God. Fire came down from heaven and burnt them up. Ananias and Sapphira. What an agreement. What an agreement. But that agreement was not according to the spirit of God. Agreement in hypocrisy and lying and deception. You see, you cannot just quote the Bible and say, Jesus said, if two of you shall agree together, that thing you agree together on must be according to the will of God. The Pharisee and the Sadducee of different religious persuasions agreeing together in prayer. You know, that will not work. If you look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23. Acts, chapter 23. And I'm reading there from verse 6, the first part of verse 6. Acts chapter 23, we're looking at verse 6. And when Paul perceived that the one part was, Sadduc was Sadducees and the other Pharisees. The one part Sadducees, the other Pharisees. Look at verse 8. For the Sadducees say... There is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. You see two people of different religious persuasions, of two different people, different doctrinal persuasions. They just quote the Bible. If two official agree as touching anything, but you don't believe the same doctrine. And you don't believe the same righteousness and holiness. You don't believe in the same supernatural that is revealed in the word of God. One is Pharisee, the other one is Sadducee. That kind of agreement, God will not answer. That's an equal yoke. Now come back to Matthew chapter. You know, you have to study this so that we clear all the all the hurdles and all the all the hindrances out of the way, and then God will answer our prayers. I said, God will answer our prayers. 
I'm reading now again from Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree as on earth as touching anything, two of you, two of you, what does that mean? Peter and John. Here they come. And they came to the gate of the, of the temple, beautiful. And then they saw this man that was lame. And then they agreed together, silver and gold have I none. What I have I give unto you. Look on us. And then that man was raised up. Two disciples with heart giving to God, with faith centered on God, Peter and John, Paul and Silas. They were suffering persecution together and they were suffering for righteousness. And then they prayed unto God and they sank unto the Lord. And the prison doors were open. Paul and Silas, if two of you of the same heart, of the same persuasion, of the same loyalty, of the same faithfulness, Paul and Silas, or you are thinking about Aquila and Priscilla, husband and wife, the same heart, in fellowship together, united together, believing the same doctrine. That's why Jesus said, if two of you, Aquila and Priscilla, Caleb and Joshua, having the same heart together and respecting and honoring the same God. If two of you, Caleb and Joshua, not Caleb with one of the other people that said we're not able, not Joshua with one of the other people that was rebelling against the will of God, but Caleb and Joshua. If two of you shall agree as touching anything, now me and Ruth. Entreat me not to leave thee where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Where you die, I will die. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. God do so to me and more. If aught but death part you and I. Now me and rules. If two of you agree together. Those are the kinds of people. Mordecai and Esther. Go tell Mordecai, go and tell the Jews, fast for me. I also and my maidens will fast. If I perish, I perish. And they, those are, that's what Jesus is talking about. They have the same consecration, the same commitment, and the same surrender, yieldedness. And that's what the Lord is talking about. Elijah and Elisha. The Lord has sent me over to Gilgal. He has sent me to Jordan. As the Lord liveth, and I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And they both went together. Such people, if two of you agree together, as touching anything that you ask me on earth, it shall be done. Read that again. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Again, I say unto you, if two of you, two of you disciples, two of your disciples, and that's what Jesus did, disciples, he sent them out. Look at Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Sent them out. How did you send them out? Chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. He sent them two by two. If two of you shall agree together, two disciples, two disciples, who are disciples? They're believers. But they are not believers who just believe partially. They are believers who believe with their whole heart, their whole mind, their whole soul. They give their whole heart unto the Lord. Let me show you this kind of discipleship. Matthew chapter 16. If two disciples will agree together, two loyal disciples, Two committed disciples. Two disciples who are sold out to God. Who are totally committed unto God. If those two disciples will agree together as touching anything, then the Lord said, he will answer. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. Matthew chapter 16 verse 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. These are the two. If you are like this and you agree together with another disciple, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. 
Those are disciples. Those who deny themselves. This is what God wants. Flesh is saying no. You say flesh, shut up. And you deny self, you deny, you deny flesh in order to be obedient to the Lord. And then it says you bear your cross, take up his cross. Whatever challenge, whatever difficulty, you take up that cross and you are following the Lord. If two such people, such disciples will agree together as touching anything that, sh that they shall ask, it says, my father will do it for them. The father will do it in Jesus' name. And then in Luke chapter 14, two disciples, Luke chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 26, Luke chapter 14, verse 26, if any man come to me, and hate not his father and mother. Let me explain that word hate. That means uh, that you prefer God above your father, above your mother, above your wife, above your very life. You give God position number one in your decision, in your service, your sacrifice, and everything you do. You don't give your wife position number one. Give your father position number one. Give your mother position number You say, no, God is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And if God calls you to do anything, if your wife says, honey, you can't do that. Oh, you say, I'm sorry. I have to do it. C.H. Spurgeon was going to get married. See, Spurgeon was a great, great minister, an evangelical. And um, he prayed so many sermons so far about John Wesley. Say, Spurgeon is another great man of God. And uh, he had had an appointment with his fiancée, that is, the lady he was going to get married to. But he went for a church service and was uh, getting something done. And that lady had been waiting. And then she waited and waited and she became offended. And then she spot you eventually got there and knocked at the door. And the lady said, I'm not going out with you anymore. And so Spot John said, Now let's settle it once and for all. I've given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, my time, my treasure, all I have belongs to the Lord. Let's uh, set it right here. God will be number one. If you are not going to marry me, say it now because I'm telling you I'm a minister and God is number one. The lady woke up and realized that Spot John was going to serve God no matter what. And then the lady shaped up and then they had a wonderful marriage. I pray you'll have a wonderful marriage. But if God is going to support that union, that man, you have to give God the position number one in your life. That's why we read in verse 26, if any man come to me and hate not father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters yea and his own life also he cannot be my disciple. This is what Jesus is saying. If two of you disciples who put God as number one above father, above mother, above children, above wife, above brother, above sister, above your very life. Those two disciples that make God number one, those are the people that Jesus spoke about. You agree together, then he will answer your prayer. He will answer your prayer. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be be my disciple. The people who are willing to endure whatever difficulties and challenges are in the way of obedience to the Lord and they say I'm going to plow through. I'm going to move on. I'm going to give God number one. Trouble or no trouble. Trial or no trial and difficulty or no difficulty. God is number one in my life. Those are the people Jesus said if two of you shall agree together as touching anything because you honor me you honor God I'm going to honor you. That's what the Lord is saying. And we're looking at uh, verse 33 of that same Luke chapter 14. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, whosoever be he be of you that forsaketh not all that he has, 
He cannot be my disciple. If money is number one and God is number two, you cannot come to God and say, God, although I rate money ahead of you, I'm agreeing with this brother, I'm agreeing with this sister, do this for me, because Jesus said, if two of you shall agree, as touching anything, no. You must rate God above property. And you're willing to forsake all for the glory of God. And those are the disciples and if those two disciples that are sold out to God, that are committed to God, that are yielded to God, if those two shall agree as touching any sin, then they shall have what they are asking for. John chapter 8. I'm reading verses 30 and 31. John chapter 8. Verses 30 and 31, as he speak these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my words, then are ye my disciples indeed. That's what Jesus is talking about. The two disciples that continue in his word. After Judas is God decided to sell Jesus Christ, although they still called him disciple, is one of them. Now, if any of the other disciples will come into agreement with Judas Iscariot, after putting 30 pieces of silver above Christ, and he said, Jesus, look at your promise. He said, if two of us shall agree, I'm agreeing with Judas Iscariot. Will God answer? No. Demons has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Only Luke is with me. If Luke then will go to demons and say, join hands with me. And although you have left our team, although you are no more following after Paul, although you love this present world, all the same, the promise of Jesus is, if two of you shall agree as touching anything, Luke and demons, it will not work. That's why we need to read the scriptures aright and you prepare your mind. I'm going to remain a disciple of Christ. I am going to remain a disciple of Christ. And you remain a disciple of Christ. And we're committed to the Lord. And we continue in his word. And then Jesus said, you agree like that? I will answer your prayer. John chapter 13. In John chapter 13, Verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, so that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Those are the two can agree together. Hey, there is, you know, there's no hypocrisy between us. There's nothing I'm hiding from you. There's nothing you're hiding from me. I'm not trying to hurt you at the back. You are, not going, you are not trying to stab me at the back. I'm not trying to be dishonest to you. And you are not trying to be disloyal unto me. And we love one another with the love of Christ. If two disciples like that, who are loving, compassionate, merciful, forgiving, forbearing to one another, and they have sincere love towards one another, if they shall agree, as touching anything. That's what the Bible is saying. It's not just two people. You can pick two people out of the street. That doesn't work. But now this one will work. I said this will work. That all men shall know that ye are my disciples. If ye have love to one to another. And then we come to agree together. There's, there's nothing hidden. There's nothing hypocritical on either side. Our hearts are free. Your heart is like my heart. And we love the Lord. We love one another. We love the Bible. We love the doctrine. We love the church. Hey, come on. We can agree together. And God is going to answer our prayer. And today we're going to start that series of prayers. And see the mountains that will move away. And see the yokes that will be broken. And see all the works of the devil that are going to be destroyed. In Ephesians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us unto him that is able tonight our God is able while you are there our God is able whatever challenge may be facing you our God is able whatever desires you have our God is able now unto him that is able to do 
able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power. There's a power here tonight, the power of the Holy Ghost that walketh in us. And mountains are going to roll away. Difficulties are going to be dissolved. And then it says, according to the power that walketh in us unto him, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Why don't you rise up now and make sure that there's no barrier. Take all the barriers away and take all the difficulties away. Just come to the Lord and say, Lord, here we are tonight. You're going to answer our prayers tonight as you call upon the name of the Lord. Ask. But before you ask, check up. What's the condition of your heart? Before the Lord, check up. Are you a real disciple? Are you a true disciple? Check up. How is your heart before the Lord? Call upon the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. It's bad and eyes closed. You want to be very, very thoughtful. You don't want these Mondays, today, next Monday, the third Monday of the month, the fourth Monday of the month, you don't want it to be wasted on you. You want to come with a new attitude to the word of God. And you want to have these great new blessings upon your life. And you want to say, Lord, this year, beginning with such special Bible studies, to ask, to seek, to knock, to receive, to find, and to have the door opened unto me. Lord, I want this January to change everything for this whole year. And it will happen. Yeah. And now you know if two of you shall agree, now you know the kind of you know the kind of friend you ought to have. The kind of prayer partner you ought to have. If two of you shall agree. Both of you, your hearts on the word of God. Both of you bearing your cross. Both of you denying self. And both of you loving God more than father, mother, wife, children, brother, sister. More than your very life. And as you come to that commitment and consecration to God. Now you know that you can agree together. And then God will answer our prayers. Father in the name of Jesus. We thank you very much because you have opened the scriptures to us today. And Lord, we pray all these promises will be ours in Jesus' name. Lord, all the Mondays of this month, we're believing you are going to open the windows of heaven. You are going to give us showers of blessing, spiritual blessing of salvation, of sanctification, of Holy Ghost baptism, of Christian growth. And blessing of soul winning. The wisdom and the power to win souls into the kingdom of God. You give to us in Jesus name. And blessings of yokes being broken. Of all the fetters being snapped. Of all the things, the chains that tie us. All those chains being totally destroyed in our lives. Give us this month in Jesus name. All the curse and all the yoke being taken away. And all the things that the evil people of the world, they have sent against any life. Oh Lord, we remove them in Jesus name. Lord, we pray this very month, all those who have been buried for many, many years. This is the month of their breakthrough. Miracle children, miracle children, you'll give unto them in Jesus name. All those who have been jobless, certificate in hand, but no work, it is this month they are having their breakthrough. Oh Lord, as they come next week and Monday and they bring all those certificates and whatever the enemy has sprinkled on that certificate will cleanse everything away. Lord, I pray everything that has been eluding and missing your people this month, we will have it in Jesus' name. 
those who are almost like a perpetual bachelors and spinsters, they prayed and prayed, it is this, that one says no, it is this, that one says no, it is this, and that one says no, oh Lord, whatever is a stumbling block, and whatever is hindering them, I remove it out of the way in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that this month is that month of breakthrough. And those who have been married that there is no child, miracle children this year in Jesus' name. Lord, where there's no peace, there will be peace. And children who are wayward, their parents are almost regretting they were born, oh Lord, this year, they'll be turning around. And then all our missionaries, our fathers and mothers, and the Lord who are here, these uh, state overseers, national overseers, oh Lord, I pray, and those who are in the regions, the region overseers, I pray, Lord, great breakthrough for them this year, in Jesus' name. All our leaders and ministers at the headquarters here and in all the other major cities uh, of this uh, nation and of Africa and beyond, oh Lord, I pray that greater anointing will come upon them. And real power will come upon them in Jesus' name. And the anointing that breaks the yoke will be upon every life. And the things that had made us to be afraid before, as if the enemy was having an upper hand, the enemies will come under their feet this year in Jesus' name do good unto the people of God even the little children you are going to bless everyone Lord I pray this year this month in particular nobody will miss their blessing and as we we'll bring other people next Monday Lord I pray you'll do great great things for your people thank you Lord because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray and every